Decibel reader. Thought experiment. Who knows you better? Someone who's worked for you or someone who's read your resume? The answer is obvious, but that obvious answer is incredibly interesting when you consider something. Adolf Hitler had maids, obviously, but Adolf Hitler's maids loved him. Not just one woman and not just a little bit, two different women who served their Fuhrer loved him so much that not in the 1940s, in the 2000s, they gave glowingly positive statements about him to the press. Multiple women who had a lens of history knowing every atrocity Hitler had committed, deaths of six million Jews, human rights violations in occupied countries, the pure hatred the Third Reich represented. I'm Jewish, so I know. And yet, when asked what they thought of him, they said the type of things you might say about a favorite boss. He was a charming man, someone who was only ever nice to me, a great boss to work for. You say what you like, but he was a good man to us. And you have to ask why didn't these women condemn Adolf Hitler? Clearly, he was a monster. I'm walking off my mark. I know the talk's dark. The mark walk wasn't intentional. But I do have funny slides, which are totally irrelevant to what I'm talking about. It's a social lubricant. Don't get mad at me. Don't throw things at me. Back to the maids. I don't think Hitler's maids didn't speak ill of him out of some perverse desire never to speak ill of the dead. Certainly any non-disclosure agreement these women had between themselves and Adolf Hitler was no longer enforceable. But I do think I know why. It's something very simple. We all do it. We form a worldview. It's based off of our own experiences and off of things we've been told and we shape that into a little ball and that little ball is our entire world and we will flagrantly reject anything that opposes it and we will embrace ludicrous crap that confirms our worldview. We have media outlets like Fox and MSNBC and Russian Times and a few others. They exist mostly because they pander to people's existing ideas. And our ideas have done no shortage of harm. Everything from Hitler's Germany to internment camps in the United States to the huge political problems we have right now, they're caused by people believing something and latching onto that belief despite logic. It's this belief that all police are heroes, which will cause a lot of people to defend a mentally ill sociopath who guns down an unarmed 12-year-old boy in a two-second interaction. A lot of people said that was justified because all cops must be heroes. I'm not saying there aren't heroic cops, but that man was fired previously from a job for mental instability around firearms and young boys. True story. But I'll step off my political soapbox because I'm sure no one else really wants to hear more about this. If I'd asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. That is the business quote equivalent to Fox frickin' news. I hear entrepreneurs say this. They say, oh, it's like Henry Ford said, if I asked my customers what they wanted, faster horse. Now, there's little to no historical evidence Ford said anything like that, but since we base our worldview off of blind faith rather than actual fact, let's imagine the conversation. You, customer, tell me what you want. Me, sir, faster horse. Bats in your belfry can't breed you a faster horse. You're an idiot. I will do what I want to do anyway and ignore any further feedback you may give me. When your customer wants something and you can't give it to them, the logical follow-up question is why. Simon Sinek said always start with why. I would say start with what, follow up with why. You want a faster horse so you can travel more quickly. Suddenly you know, I can't breed a faster horse, but I can come up with a solution to their problem. If solutions were readily apparent, customers would already have them. Lots of entrepreneurs, they get like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. It's a precious. If I share my idea, people will steal it. Then my product will never be released. But if you don't share your ideas and you don't collaborate, you don't seek feedback and through iteration and testing, you'll build something that sucks. You could build a calendar app that lacks basic function as a calendar. <laughs> Laugh line. But I'll tell a story that's not about that. Met with an entrepreneur recently, he built an app, he was sure it was gonna be the next Facebook, Snapchat, Uber, next unicorn. We went in a coffee shop, he said we'd spent six months building the product, and I asked how many people had seen it, what do they think? He said, no one's seen this app. So we did a user test. We asked 10 people in the coffee shop what they thought of the app. 10 out of 10 people couldn't tell us what the app did by looking at it. 10 out of 10 people didn't need an app in that need space when they were told what it did. Six months of product development was wasted because things were built off of opinions, and off of cherry-picked data, and off of a freaking Henry Ford quote that he never said. When you cherry-pick your data to support your existing worldview, and you make decisions off of your own opinion, you are literally acting the way Hitler's maids did. He was always kind to me. Nothing else matters. 
There's no room for that in business or politics or life. Thank you.